And speaking of ridiculous amounts of money, let's talk about a recent debate that's been happening over Twitter about the the best ways to support the anime industry and whether sites like Crunchyroll are effective ways to support the anime industry. Of course, this was all inspired basically off of uh, Crunchyroll's announcement, or rather Elation Studios' announcement of a new division for original animated content announcing their new show, High Guardian Spice, that they are developing. And, you know, there's some controversies over High Guardian Spice that are very misled by... People are misled or, like, misguided in their criticisms. They're like, oh, you're putting your the anime you're earning into this, and it's the money you're earning into this instead of, like, supporting anime, which is not really a firm understanding of where the money Crunchyroll is going, where that really goes. Like, like Crunchyroll pays a lot of royalties and a lot for, like, the upfront costs for the shows they stream. And... As an article by uh, Justin Zavakis, you know, points out, you know, the advanced payments they pay for anime rights for per episode cost can be enough sometimes to cover the cost of an entire production. So Crunchyroll is doing its part pretty well. And of course, Crunchyroll gets a income. It, it pro- gets a profit. And in those profits that Crunchyroll receives it can choose to invest in you know whatever it wants and often Crunchyroll is investing back into anime but it also makes sense you know and who knows if this is Crunchyroll the company's decision or Elation the company that owns Crunchyroll's decision to invest in original content but generally with any media company you would expect them to venture out into original content because that gives them, you know, their own IPs to promote and market and stuff. So it's like Netflix, you know, Netflix acquired so much content and it profited off of that. And then it had enough revenue and income to finance and produce its own content. And that's kind of what we're seeing with Crunchyroll now. And that's kind of a sign that Crunchyroll has grown pretty big and that it can sustain, you know, its own original content. And in general, having another platform, another place that is, you know, making original anime content, it's only good for the international anime industry in general, the international animation industry. So it's like a very myopic very misguided kind of view of like that this is taking away revenue from anime production when really this is kind of just distributing it and like creating more opportunities for artists in general internationally to you know get involved in productions and stuff Uh, and in general that also and you know it also helps the you know u.s animation industry you know this is again another you know cool project another project to work on Another company that is investing in original projects that gives more opportunity to artists and animators. You know, it's a competitive field. There are, are oh, there's always like a struggle to find jobs and stuff. So this is a good thing in my opinion. Uh, and then of course there's a bunch of misogynistic complaints because you know the it's the show is promoted as being by having an all female writing staff and the the trailer is all about how. Like, they have a 50% female staff and all-female writing staff. And so a lot of people have misogynistic complaints that they're like, you know, which are, like, completely irrational and not really worth giving the time of day because they're so transparently misogynistic. But, you know, this that whole debate debacle is its own issue. Uh, But... What it led to, of course, was that uh, YouTuber Digibro made a video, you know, exploiting the con- the controversy over High Guardian Spice to just rant about what he doesn't like about Crunchyroll. And one of the things he brought up was, like, that Crunchyroll is not putting enough resources into anime. Or it was, it's ineffectively supporting the anime industry. 
Though, of course, DJ Bro says he doesn't care about supporting the anime industry, but just the artists he likes. So it's it's like, you know. But anyway, the point is, is that this led to a discussion of, like, how the Crunchyroll and streaming sites support the anime industry and, like, what could be done to get away from the current system that relies on, you know, the committees and uh, studio and, like, and basically a, a lot of the problems that people have mentioned about the industry that there's like too many things in production that the way that things are done is that there are too many shows put into, into production not all of them profit and this just creates like a glut of overworked animators and not enough resources and reducing the quality of the shows and all that but basically on the side of you know what the streaming sites do Justin Savox's response to Digi's video basically puts to rest the idea that the that Crunchyroll doesn't do enough to support paying for productions because again, oftentimes Crunchyroll is paying for the cost of entire production. But basically, this is also I, what I wanted to run off from. This is like applying this to manga uh, licensing and like the uh, the idea of like a how to support manga more efficiently. And I feel like we don't have, like, something quite equivalent to Crunchyroll for manga, but, like, the way I see it, like, digital sales from, well, you know, what we know does do a lot to support back to the industry. And this is all, of course, you know, this whole complaint of this whole, you know, excuse to uh, bag on Crunchyroll as a way to rely on piracy and not pay for products because, oh, by supporting and if this thing, I'm not giving enough back to creators, so what's the point? But obviously it's very important because the revenue generated by legal services like this, again, contribute a lot of income back to Japan and back to creators. And so I just wanted to have a dialogue, I guess, about like what would be the most, what changes could are there changes that could be made to the system or like what could we do for manga that you know could have like something like what Crunchyroll is doing in terms of these advanced payments or whatever I'm not really sure like the direction where to go with this or like how what to where to take this topic right now because unfortunately like I don't I, I this is something that requires research on my end it requires like we should talk to ex some experts about this uh, who, you know, know the industry very well. But, like, I just thought it was an interesting discussion that was happening that I want to see where we can apply to the manga industry in the future and future discussions. Though I will also call out Digibro for uh, one comment he made in one of his videos where he said that one piece is so big that sales of Shonen Jump are enough to support Ichiro Oda and Shueisha, which are, like, just through Jump sales alone. Which is obviously not true. There's no way a series could just be successful and uh, support itself through the sales of Jump alone. You know, you know, they rely on the print volume sales being successful. That's insanely important. Like the individual series needs to be successful through the print volumes. Like that's a that's the measure of its success. Like Jump sales aren't enough to like help support the creator. And also, obviously, you know, having a successful anime and all sorts of merchandising products are important to helping the creator. Like, even creators that have a successful manga and that has franchising and merchandise and stuff, even they can struggle to, like, make ends meet. So it is important to have, like, multiple sources of income. It is important to have, like, physical products for people to buy. So, and to su show back support for their work, like, uh, a big thing related to discussion is this whole idea of Patreon services where you directly support artists and whether that is a sustainable way to support productions. But obviously, with the sheer numbers involved, like, this... It, it cannot support an entire anime production or a studio's output or... Could it support, you know, a mangaka by themselves? Like, we know that there are some mangaka who have their own Patreons. Uh, we discussed one 
a long time ago who set up his own Patreon. And if you subscribe to the Patreon, uh, you would get like an English translation of his manga. I believe the manga was called Jean, but I forget the mangaka's name. So there are some mangaka who have set up their own Patreons, but I don't think that's their only source of income. Like I rem- that guy's Patreon, that mangaka's Patreon, is at the. I remember for a long time it was not even a hundred dollars; it was less than that. So, you know, it is important to have like other sources of income. Like it can be a nice bonus. It can be a nice like on top to like the income that you know uh, creators are receiving through the uh, through like other means through this current system but like direct fan to creator support does not seem viable right now so i guess that's like the main thing i was was very interested in from this debate when it came into can we support creators directly just fan to creator will that work for the manga industry and i don't think that will work you know as a sustainable way to support the industry i think that like the, having physical products and merchandise and all that stuff is an important means for creators to, you know, support themselves. So, like, the whole direct support system just... It works for, like, internet personalities or, like, smaller artists, but on a large on a large scale for large productions which involve multiple people, it's just not viable and sustainable so that's kind of the the interesting thing i wanted to take away from it but you know it's a it's a complex topic uh with multiple sides some arguments are more valid than others i feel uh but you know it's an ongoing discussion of like what are the best ways to support artists and creators and can we get away from systems that might not be efficient or all that so it's it's very it's important to have discussions like this just to kind of throw ideas out there and figure out okay what's working now why is it working and how would we feasibly and realistically change things like how how does this idea of direct fan support that we're seeing from things like Patreon, how could that become like a viable means of support? So it's something to consider at the very least to, to think about and discuss. But that is about all I have to say on the topic for now. Perhaps this is something we could come back to in the future. It definitely is a subject worth further discussion, I think. 